Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips. And the first thing I'll do is remind you we're getting closer and closer to conference. So if you're coming, you need to buy a ticket. Um, boy, if you live in central Ohio or someplace that's easy driving distance from here, you should be here. You're going to learn a lot about mental health, musculoskeletal health, moving without pain, um, diet and pregnancy, the blue zones, weight loss, weight management, habit change, all cool stuff that you want to know about. And our special guest is Cheryl Atkinson, who is a former news anchor, network news anchor, who is one of the best investigative reporters you will ever hear from. And we are going to have an entire evening of interviewing Cheryl Atkinson and answering your questions about everything from cancer treatment to vaccines. So don't miss this conference. Um, November 9th through 16, you can get more information about it at our website, wellnessfarmhealth.com. Go to the What's New section, you'll see flyers, and there should be a uh, schedule posted there so you can start to take a look at all the workshops you can participate in and that sort of thing. All right, I mentioned last week, um, been talking about cancer, and I said I was going to do a video clip on hyperthermia, and I think it's important to do this um, because it's used as a treatment for cancer, and there's some reason to um, look at it as adding efficacy to traditional treatment. So what is hyperthermia? Well, it involves increasing the temperature of an organ or part or region of the body, or even the entire body, to as high as 133 degrees. Um, Research shows that high temp temperatures damage and kill cancer cells, and if it's done properly, there's very minimal damage to the surrounding tissue, so there's not a lot of risk involved. Hyperthermia has been shown to increase the efficacy of several cancer drugs and radiation, and um, so sometimes hyperthermia is done at the same time as other treatments, sometimes within a, a very short period of time of one another. When used together, research shows that hyperthermia significantly improves outcomes for patients who have cancers of the head and neck, breast, brain, bladder, cervix, rectum, lung, esophagus, vulva, and vagina, and for melanoma. The effect was originally thought to be due to the fact that cancer cells are more sensitive to heat than normal cells, but it's not true of all cancer cells. And so it's now thought that the effect is more due to the fact that heat has a negative effect on the tumor environment itself. Tumors can't really easily dissipate heat due to their primitive blood supply. So the longer the heat is applied, the more damage to the microcirculation within the tumor and the more difficult it becomes for the tumor to kill itself, or cool itself, I should say. And then the fibrinogen deposits that uh, result from hyperthermia at damaged areas decrease the microcirculation even more, and you end up with a lot of, a lot of cytotoxic damage to the cancer cells. So um, at one point in time, we thought that we were killing the cancer cells with heat. Now it seems like what we're doing is changing the microenvironment of the um, microcirculation and environment of the tumor itself and that it has a spillover effect on it on the cancer cells. There are all kinds of different ways to deliver hyperthermia to the body, um, including three types of localized hyperthermia. And I'm just going to tell you a little bit about each of these so that you know what to expect. And if you decide or somebody who has cancer decides to pursue this, you'll know what you're looking for. So external hyperthermia is used for small localized tumors. So think about uh, breast cancer, um, a superficial malignant melanoma uh, lesion, lymph node metastases um, associated with head and neck tumors. It's applied using microwave or radio wave or ultrasound with applicators that are placed directly on the tumors with the goal of increasing the temperature right within the tumor. And then there, another form of external um, uh, therapy is intraluminal or endocavitary hyperthermia, which is used for tumors in or near body cavities like the esophagus or rectum. Probes are placed in the cavity or sometimes even inserted all the way into the tumor uh, to heat either the general area or the tumor specifically, depending on how it's done. Interstitial techniques are used to treat tumors located deeper in the body, like brain tumors, and this has to be done under anesthesia, obviously. The tumor is heated to much higher temperatures than is possible with um, external hyperthermia. Um, then there's, if you graduate from local to regional hyperthermia where you're trying to heat a region of the body, and this could be a body cavity or an organ or a limb. Uh, deep tissue um, hyperthermia is used for cancers inside the body, like think cervical or bladder cancer. Regional perfusion is used to treat melanoma in the arms or legs and in some organs like the liver or lung. In this procedure, blood is removed, it's heated, and then perfused back into the limb or organ. And it's often done in conjunction with chemotherapy to potentiate the chemotherapy to make it more effective. 
Continuous hyperthermic peritoneal perfusion is used to treat cancers in the peritoneal cavity like the intestines, stomach, and liver. It's an invasive procedure that involves heated chemotherapy drugs flowing from a warming device into the cavity, which reaches temperatures of up to 107 or 108 degrees. Some people find this very uncomfortable, but again, I'll get to the efficacy rates in a minute. Whole body hyperthermia is just that. You heat the whole body. The temperature is elevated to varying levels and for varying periods of, periods of time. A lot of this depends upon the tolerance of the patient and the health status of the patient. A session can last for as long as four to five hours. It's generally used for patients who have metastasized cancer and to prevent metastasized cancer um, in patients who have high risk cancers such as triple negative uh, hormone uh, receptor positive or uh, hormone receptor negative breast cancer patients. There are several techniques that are used and that can be anything from thermal incubators to hot water blankets. The efficacy of hyperthermia is related to temperature, higher is better and the characteristics of the tumor in cancer cells. It's very much determining, determined by what type of cancer you have. To ensure safety, temperature has to be monitored at all times. So you want to go to somebody reputable to have this done. I would tell you to stay away from um, somebody who's doing this in their living room, for example. And there are people who do this, believe it or not. Several phase two trials have compared treatment with radiation alone versus treatment with radiation and hyperthermia and shown that the combination treatment is much better for local control of recurrent breast cancer and malignant melanoma and for survival for head and neck, uh, head and neck lymph node metastases, glioblastoma, and cervical cancer. Studies show that hyperthermia can result in a response rate of over 70% for malignant tumors without damaging the surrounding tissue when treating ca cancers like squamous cell carcinoma, adenocarcinoma, malignant melanoma, plasmacytomas, liposarcoma, sarcoma, epithelioid sarcoma, and undifferentiated sarcoma. Localized hyperthermia has been shown to have a positive effect on tumors that have become resistant to radiation treatment. This is very important when applied um, in combination with radiation treatment. So if your cancer is not responding to radiation alone, the addition of hyperthermia may make it start responding to radiation again. In one study, complete regression was achieved in 31 out of 54 resistant lesions, like 57.5%. That's very high. There are several mechanisms of action that explain how this works. It works by stimulating immune responses to cancer and inhibiting repair to cancer cells that have been damaged by chemotherapy and radiation. Hyperthermia has been shown to induce programmed death or apoptosis of cancer cells. It inhibits angiogenesis or the building of a very elaborate network of blood supply to the tumor. It's been shown to inhibit metastases. Additionally, tumor cell membranes become more permeable when heated, which is why chemotherapy drugs are more effective when uh, done in conjunction or administered in conjunction with hyperthermia. The most important fact about hyperthermia, however, and I've saved this for last, is that it's been shown to help cancer patients to live longer, and that's the goal of treatment, or it should be anyway. It improves both progression-free and overall survival. In a clinical trial of patients with soft tissue carcinoma, uh, patients randomized to chemotherapy plus hyperthermia had prolonged survival rates compared with those randomized to chemotherapy alone. And here were the differences noted. For five-year survival, 62.7% versus 51.3%, adding in the uh, hyperthermia. And then at 10 years, survival of 52.6% versus 42.7%. That's significant. Now, this is what's very discouraging. According to the American Cancer Society, hyperthermia is, quote, largely an experimental technique at this time. It's considered an important part of cancer treatment in Europe, however, but not in the United States. According to cancer researcher and full disclosure friend of mine, Dr. Ralph Moss, the reason is that, quote, the treatment is not a mass-produced drug, but relies on natural treatment, heat. It requires the purchase and maintenance of expensive equipment and more importantly, the training of highly skilled techni technical personnel to administer the treatment. Few hospitals have been proven willing to make such an investment. The FDA issued a humanitarian use approval for a device that delivers hyperthermia to cervical cancer patients. The approval specifically states that the device is to be used in conjunction with radiation treatment and only for patients who do not qualify for chemotherapy. The FDA states that the probability of, of benefit to health uh, outweighs risk in this very specific population. So anything other than that would be considered off-label use. A few U.S. treatment centers do offer hyperthermia. 
It's only reimbursable for limited indications such as chest wall recurrence and breast cancer. In combination with radiation, Medicare will reimburse for it. But other than a very small number of superficial cancers, there is no other indication that is approved for hyperthermia treatment in the United States. I think for many cancer patients, this adjuvant treatment is worth pursuing. It's standard in Germany. Most cancer patients, many cancer patients, get hyperthermia. It can prolong life and often significantly more than drugs and radiation that are used in traditional treatment. So um, hopefully this gives you an idea of what this is, um, this is all about. We have had many members over the years who've decided to go to foreign countries to get hypothermia treatment because it was just easier than trying to do it in the United States. And I would say if you have the resources to do that, it's probably a good idea. Uh, but there are places you can go in the United States. If you, if you Google hyperthermia cancer treatment U.S., you'll see centers that do offer it. And again, I would encourage you to make sure that the person administering the hyperthermia is well experienced and knows what he or she is doing so that you maximize the benefit and reduce the risk of surrounding tissue damage. All right, as usual, pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it. Hit that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber so you can get these videos every Tuesday and Thursday. Great information that may one day save your life or the life of somebody who you know. I'll be back to you on Thursday with more news.